think about it, a clock is not a time, a clock is a frequency. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. You mustn't try and define time, you need to define frequency because that's your measuring device. Well, so isn't that a definition for time? Well, yeah, cl- time is what clocks do, and in this case, the clock is yeah. this oscillatory yeah. behavior. No, I, I it's think not that- no, it's not a definition for time because, first of all, you have to decide what division is. Well, so if you division? have, if I mean, if you're measuring something and you're watching it oscillate, there's there's a zero. What we're talking about? What are we talking about? What is oscillating? Is this, <laughs> this is charge, right? What are we talking about here? Well, I'm no. thinking about an atomic clock, right? Where you have you have the cesium atom that is oscillating at nine billion cycles a second. Yes, that's right. And so that's there's there's a there's a small size and there's a big size and the oscillation between those are those spatial oscillations. Those are energy state oscillations, right? Yeah, but what you're doing is you 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 you're measuring a certain number of those and then calling that a second. In fact, right. that's the push of a second at the moment. Right. That defines the time, but it doesn't say that that's what time is. I, I, I unpack that they're, because they're indistinguishable to- in the theory, from what I understand. The thing is, it's a measurement of time. That's a different thing for it being time. Now, and, and the difference comes in understanding what division is. Because what is this thing we call division? I mean, you, you know, you divide well, one divided by six is a six. That's okay. That's okay. If you're dividing a number by another number, you get a, uh, you get a, a rational number. But what happens when you divide um, something like distance? So you divide something like so if we look at if we look at if if we if we look at okay well you're going to get the uncertainty relation coming right at you in a second you know that don't you so 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 so, so the uncertainty relations are things like energy the energy time uncertainty you know about this delta e delta t is less than or equal to half h bar okay now that's much more interesting if you don't use energy but you use frequency because energy is h nu so h nu t is less than or equal to half h bar. Okay, we've got an uncertainty relation. We can't know them both at once. So which one do you want? At the quantum level, you cannot know those both at once. It's an uncertainty relation between frequency and time. So which one do you think is more fundamental? Well, if you think about what time is, time is this floppy thing, which is anything you like, depending on how fast you want to go. So whose time? However, frequency is a measure of energy. And if we take a specific photon, the photon going from candle to eye, then these are yellow photons here, then I know what the frequency is. I know what the wavelength is. It's, what is it? Um, uh, about um, 550 nanometers. And I can work out, a, 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 and I know the frequency of that. I can work out the frequency if I do some sums. What is it? Uh, I forgot. I've forgotten what the frequency of typical photons are. I know their. I know their energies. So, um, so what, what's happening there is that the thing that's being transferred from candle to eye is is, is energy. It's a, it's a lump of energy that's come across. It's a lump of frequency that's been transferred, not a bit of time. It's taken time for that frequency to get, for that stuff to get there. It's taken a nanosecond to get from the candle to my eye. And that can be used as a definition of the space which I'm sitting in. But there's a different definition for space for every observer and a different definition for time for every observer. So time and space is just floppy. But, but they're floppy according to rules which we can use to work out what other people's time and other people's space will look like. There's a, recipro- a, a reciprocal stuff between... Um, you guys and me, and we were both rotating, so you've got a vector going down here and I've got a vector going up here due to the rotation of the Earth. We're in different frames. And we therefore have different rulers and different clocks, but we can work out they're pretty closely equal. We're not moving very fast on relativistic scales. But time I mean, to, to me, it, change. Sorry. Energy is transferred. Uh-huh. Yeah, I guess to me it, it makes sense that a clock that you take on under extraordinary inertial pressures is going to suffer from those pressures and slow down inevitably as a result of that inertial strain. In following from Mach's principle that things are connected to one another, it just makes sense to me. That That's true, but that doesn't... So it, it, if the 
inertial frame of the clock is causing it to slow down, then you still are asserting that time is what clocks do. I mean, they have to be. It's inseparable in terms of the equations. But I'm not sure that John agrees. Oh, I'm not, I'm not sure I agree either. I, th- I okay. think frequency is what clocks do. Sure. Clock does frequency. We impose time by saying a certain number of cycles is an amount of time. Right, right. But so why is that, why is that not a definition of time? That's, that's the part that I think is the last little, like... It still seems you're defining it by what clocks are doing. Well, oh, but... Am I missing something? I think you are missing something, because I think that John is saying that frequency is what clocks do, and frequency is one measurement of interval, but that's not what time is. 